Hello and welcome to the Spreadex weekly market update for the 20th of April. This week the focus has been on Spain as tensions increased over its ability to fund itself in the long term, with the concerns particularly centred on their regional banks' exposures to a yet unfinished property market crash. Yields on the benchmark 10-year government debt again went above 6%, with some economists worrying that this could drag the Eurozone's third largest economy, Italy, back into the crisis. However, the bloc's leaders have sharply refuted these claims that Spain may need to tap into the European Financial Stability Facility. The chairman of the Eurozone Finance Ministers, Jean-Claude Junquier, said that Spain was taking all the necessary steps to get its economy back on track. This despite the 24% rate of unemployment. He also urged financial markets to behave in a rational way and realise Spain was on track. It is an apparent bid to calm speculation on secondary markets. But the evidence may, may be a little more troubling for policymakers as they are unlikely to hit budget deficit targets this year, with the IMF projecting a 6% gap against its goal of only 5.3%. Despite this, it is unlikely any bailout will be seen for a while as the government has already managed to raise around half of its 86 billion euro uh, that it needs to finance itself this year, helped by a relatively successful bond auction this Thursday. Markets had a mixed reaction to these developments, with, no, with the euro making no strong moves against the US dollar, failing to break away from the 131 level, and European equity index starting Friday morning marginally higher than where they opened on Monday. Germany's DAX, for instance, was trading at 9am on Friday at around 66.70, this was up 110 points in Monday's open. Elsewhere, the Argentinian government has caused a stir within the world trade community by expropriating a 51% stake in the domestic oil producer YPF, which had previously been held by the Spanish energy giant Repsol. The move is thought to be the biggest of its kind since Russia's government's seizure of UCOS oil nearly a decade ago. However, the move had further ramifications for President Cristina Fernandez as it was unveiled on Wednesday that the nationalisation had scuppered years of planning by China's Sinopec to buy the company. Mexico, Brazil and the United States have all condemned Argentina and have warned it risks cutting itself off from world financial markets. Sterling has had a strong week after it emerged from the Bank of England minutes on Wednesday that the arch dove Adam Posen no longer supported a policy of quantitative easing. The news shocked markets, which were already trying to digest news that inflation had been higher in March. Although the latter is normally thought to be worse for the domestic currency, news that there is likely to be no more gilt purchases from the bank sent sterling to a near six-month high, rallying from around 158.50 on Monday to a high of 161.15 early Friday. The main movers on the UK equity markets were the mid-cap oil stocks, particularly those focused on the Falkland Islands, as rumours floated around traders that borders and southern petroleum had struck oil around the disputed provinces. Despite no confirmation from the company itself, shares in the AIM listed stock shot up 81% by Friday morning from its close on Tuesday before the news was announced. Rockhopper Exploration, Desire Petroleum and Falkland Island Oil and Gas all rallied off the back of this as well. Elsewhere, Supergroup shares fell 45% on Friday morning as they issued a profits warning. India's Tata pulled out of a bid to buy cable and wireless worldwide, leaving Vodafone the only party left in the troubled telco. And GDS Suez came in with an improved bid of 418 pence a share for the remaining 30% stake of the FTSE 100 company International Power.